Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be unboxing this uh, used i7-4700 MQ, 4700MQ. It's a 4-core processor that I hope to uh, install into my Lenovo G510 and get 4 cores instead of 2 cores. Now let's quickly take a look inside the box and I hope it's a relatively big box for a very small comparatively sized processor so let's just see how well it was packed and here is the processor <laughs> Just look at the size, but oh, it's it's very well packed considering all this extra padding was added just to prevent it from being squeezed by the post. Very well packed. So looks like this is going to be the future of my laptop. I'm going to just quickly install it and start doing some tests. The most important test is the heat and uh, just to see if there are any bent pins. Everything looks very straight. Everything looks good. So I'm going to be comparing this to my i5-4210M this is a processor that came with the laptop uh, when I bought it five years ago in 2014 and um, it has done everything I've requested for it to do with no problems. The only reason why I'm upgrading to a 4-core is for video editing and uh, Camtasia currently renders a 10 minutes video in 30 minutes. So for every one minute of video it renders in 30, in, in 3, so 1 to 3 ratio. And I want to see if 4 cores is going to give me any improvement. If it doesn't give me any improvement, I'm going back to the i5, especially if it's that's giving me a lot of heat and uh, fan noise problems. So I'm going to update in another video comparing uh, both systems and finally I will decide if I'm going to stay with an i7 or an i5. Okay, so I'm just going to speed through the process of installing the new processor in place of the old i5. So once you make sure that your laptop is uh, upgradable to this version of CPU, then you can follow um, a video guide on YouTube about your specific model. This is just showing you how I do it on mine, which is a Lenovo G510. There is a lock screw, torque screw holding the processor in place that I just turned around and it unlocks the processor. And now I'm going to place in the new one or the replacement and then lock that screw to hold onto the processor itself. Now I'm cleaning with um, isopropyl alcohol 99% for electronic work and preparing the surface of the CPU for um, thermal paste which I've just applied in, in a line. And now I replace the heatsink and fan assembly on the heatsink I have labeled the numbers 1, 2, 3, which is the pattern you should screw the heatsink back onto the CPU. And that was it, done. So now I press the button to switch on and the Windows logo comes on. And unfortunately my phone battery died and I had to quickly replace and the computer had already started by the time I came back. 
Uh, I'm going to show you now in the phone, the laptop properties, the CPU installed, which should read uh, 4700 MQ i7. And I'm going to also show you some of the the core heat, the heat of the cores, the four cores using CPU core temp. So I immediately found out that this computer is going to now idle at around uh, mid 40s, mid 40s to 50s, and uh, this is about eight to ten degrees more than the i5 idled. But so far, the fan noise has been uh, not different from the i5, and uh, that was a welcome uh, relief because I hoped the fan noise would uh, remain low, considering that now I have doubled the cores. So you can see from the properties of the computer now that it's now an Intel Core i7, and so the installation was successful. I'm opening up my task manager now just to see the CPU speed and it's it's performing well just idling at around 0.7 gigahertz so pretty much a very good and efficient uh, power saving mode when the, the temp when the computer is doing nothing so I found out that the computer uses now almost the same energy, around 18 watts instead of uh, 12 to 14 for its idle work. So mm, for double the cores, not really any much more uh, consumption in power at the wall. Okay guys, so that is it. It was a successful upgrade. I'm now going to start uh, running through different softwares that I use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to see if there's any improvement in speed of a computing task. With double the cores, I should have uh, double the performance in an ideal world, but we all know that that's not going to happen because uh, there is going to be thermal issues and uh, throttling, which I hope to combat by undervolting. And that is going to come up in another video, how I tackle the heat and how I try to keep the performance high. Take care, guys. Thanks.